Hi guys, welcome. So I'm going to show you a simple strategy of purchasing inverse ETFs to profit off of a, a market decline. Um, if you've studied the 2008 recession, you've studied what happened in 2009, you've studied what happens in 2011. Uh, if you have no knowledge on any of these subjects, do not worry. If you have no understanding of financial markets, I'm going to teach you what I know. I'm going to try as best as I can to convey um, exactly what I'm trying to do. And for the most part, if you complete watching this movie, um, you should you should know the simple strategy behind turning twenty dollars into over nine thousand three hundred dollars worth of dollars. I mean, nine thousand three hundred dollars essentially is what we're talking about. Um, so as fantastic as that may sound to you. Um, watch this with an open mind and an open understanding do your own research don't ever do anything that you don't understand and don't ever do something that you disagree with but you can pray about it take it to the father um, if it feels if you feel like this is something that you should be compelled to do um, don't operate with greed but um, I do believe this is a method that we can use to prosper, and so that's why I'm doing this. If you subscribe, and I do recommend you subscribe, I'm not trying to build um, a YouTube fan base. I could care less. I don't want your money. I'm not asking for donations. Um, although the father knows I could, I could use donations. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, would, I would put your money to good use. Let me put it that way. I'd find your money. Five Guys Burgers? I don't know. I'd, I'd find something to do with your money. Trust me. But I don't want your money. I want you to prosper. Um, this is my response to the people that say um, you have no choice. Um, I'm going to empower you through knowledge. And, I'm, and when you arm yourself with knowledge and you understand the mechanics of the game, you can understand how it's played. You can take your own life choices and your future, your financial future, into your hands. And whether win or lose, at least you didn't make a choice by default which is what happens when you choose to make no choice when you choose not to do anything and so at least put your money where the where your mouth is that's what i'm doing and um we can do this together we can do this as a team um you can talk to me this is a live stream i'm going to keep it as a live stream because i i don't want you to think that I'm ever cutting something out or that I'm ever obscuring something from you or I'm hiding something from you. I want this as open as possible. I'm gonna try and keep these movies really short. So I'm gonna show you the basics of what you need to do in order to invest in, in Robinhood. Robinhood app is a, it's what you use instead of a broker. When you buy stocks or you play around in the stock market, um, you need something that's called a broker. It's a paid service. You would have to pay per trade or however you hire your broker in order to do this. With Robinhood, this app that I'm showing you right here that I'm scrolling up and down on, this is an app you can buy, or not buy, excuse me, absolutely not buy. It's free, 100% free. You can get it for your iPhone. You can get it if you have a Samsung phone or an Android phone. It doesn't matter. It, it's on all platforms. It is free. Um, you know, you may ask, why is it free? And well, I'll tell you right up front, just so you know, because I looked into it, because I don't believe in anything as a, such as a free lunch, that they do use your balance. So for example, here, the $1.65 I have credited to this account, my buying power, that's a credit. That's how much, that's $1.65 that I have, that I have sitting there. They'll take this money and they will tr use it and they'll trade with stocks. So they guarantee that it'll be there if you want to withdraw the money back to your bank but th that's how they make their money. They take the, the money that's sitting around, the spare money that you haven't invested yet, and they'll, they'll play around with it. And you can read it all, you can read all about it in their terms and, and, and uh, their terms and agreements. But for the most part, um, this, is, this is how they make their money. Um, to keep it a free service, I find it a completely convenient trade-off. Um, I recommend it. I don't think there's anything wrong with what they're doing. Um, it's a free brokerage. Broker Brokers take tons of money and fees. You don't need that. If you don't have a lot of money, um, this strategy is for you. And um, I absolutely am going to be showing you um, trading advice um, from, the pers from the perspective that you don't have a lot of money to invest. That you, Because I understand, I fully understand um, folks that go paycheck to paycheck and I fully understand the, the, the current economic and financial environment that we're in.
And so, um, I also recommend if you if you're not aware of this environment and you don't need to be poor or not have a lot of money to play with um, in order to employ this strategy. Uh, if you have more money and you you choose to um, invest more money, then I recommend you can go ahead and do so. But let me know about it. Let me let me help you um, or at least give you my take on the subject. Um, and I also I I also want to just quick disclaimer that. If you invest your money and you lose your money, and I could be 100% wrong about this, but in my opinion, it's a very small chance to take. We're talking about $20 in this video. So it's a very small amount of money, a very small amount of risk, and that's how I like to play my my uh, my financials. I like, I like a very small risk. Every investment is a risk. You, you, you take a greater risk every time you, you, you get in your car and you go to work. You take a, a, a bigger risk than the one we're taking right now. So without any further ado, I want you to understand that your money is your responsibility. However, if I do know that I'm wrong about something, if I do know that if I find something else out that, that I didn't realize before and I realize it was a bad idea, I will come back and I will openly tell you I was wrong about it and I will openly tell you why I was wrong and and I will offer an apology um, if if I do find out something I, I don't know I'm not ironclad I have a limited amount of time I work about 55 hours a week so I do this in my spare time because I want to help my brothers and sisters I want to help those in the Torah observant community I want to help believers in the Messiah I want to help Bible believers I want you guys to get ahead um, so Without further ado, I'm just going to jump into it. So that's my disclaimer. That's where I'm at. Here's Robinhood. Robinhood, you can transfer funds. So you link your bank account to it, obviously. And you can set up automatic deposits or linked accounts. If you are short on funds and you don't have a lot of money in your bank, I don't recommend setting up automatic deposits. There's nothing that's really gained by that. Um, when you go to do a transfer, you can go ahead and just... Punch in however however much money you want to transfer. In our situation, you'd want to put in twenty dollars. You'd hit review, and then you would confirm it. When you hit review and you confirm it, that money becomes immediately available, even though it hasn't been withdrawn from your bank just just then, and it will eventually transfer from your bank, but it takes four days. But the creators of the Robinhood app they make that money instantly available, and so you can immediately invest that. You can go search for a and today we're going to be focusing on the FAS. The, you're going to, you can go ahead and find the stock you want to invest in, or in our case, it's an ETF, and ETFs work slightly differently. Especially, specifically, our we're 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 going to be purchasing an inverse ETF. Um, which, if you don't understand what that is, I will cover it later on in another video. I want to keep this one short as an introduction to prove to you that anyone can do this. Uh, you do not need to be a genius. You can just follow exactly what I'm showing you in this video and prosper, but you should do your homework, you should go look it up, you should go find out what an inverse ETF is, is about and how it functions. Um, I'm going to be very simple in my explanation. Basically, this specific inverse ETF, what it does is it shorts the financial markets. What is a short? Uh, to get into that, I'm going to get into that in just a second, but first I want to show you how you can buy and sell this stock, right? So after you've deposited $20, you went over here to this, this search icon. It's in the top right corner. You hit that. You type in the FAS. This is a ticker. This, this, this is how you identify which ETF or stock you want to invest in. When you type it in, it pulls it up. Here it is. You click it. Right? Then you can go to purchase it. When you purchase it, you hit buy. You tell them how many you want. In our case, you just transfer twenty dollars. So you go ahead and you put in one dollar, or, or excuse me, you just want to buy one share of of the of the FAS, right? Then you hit review, you confirm it, and you will be now the proud owner of one share of this um, ETF, this inverse ETF. So we're going to talk a little bit about why this strategy is going to work and how exactly this is going to produce. Um, value. So let me quick switch my screens here. So All 
I want to make sure I'm online here. It's weird because YouTube. Okay, I am being recorded. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, there was a slight delay, and I wanted to make sure that um, I was recording this video. So let me go over to the 2008 recession. So ultimately, the economic client, climate that 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 was occurring during during the 2008 recession right so the market was going up it was happening it was it was actually in a bubble situation where the market seemed to be a, be doing very well um, but it was actually being propped up by a lot of bad business decisions uh, there was this category of loans called subprime loans and um, if you can re remember how things were back in 2008 and I do uh, things were very dicey um, a lot of people had lost their jobs, um, lost their 401ks, their life savings, because of the shenanigans that the financial markets, the banks were up to, um, and the, 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 the collapsing of the bubble. And so basically a lot of bad loans propped up the bubble, so it, it seemed like things were going very well, like the market was in an upswing. And so, you know, and I can't find a good image of this. 2008 recession. Should I put collapse? That? Let me do that. But it's known as the Great Recession, or the financial crisis of 2008, 2000, 2007, 2008. And so, ultimately, the market was doing very well, and then 2008 happened, boom, and the bubble popped. And it was a bubble because it was being it was being propped up by all these subprime loans, right? And so the the market seemed like it was doing very well. It wasn't. The bubble popped. We were in a financial bubble. Um, and what happened during that period is we had the auto bailout. The government stepped in and they wanted to, um, you know, save the market. But ultimately. Everything that happened, you know, with the Lehman and also, you know, Lehman, Lehman Brothers collapsing, um, their stocks going down, all, all these different factors came into play. But the long and short of it is that it, what was going on economically is kind of a lot of what was go what's going on with your quote-unquote rich neighbor. Um, everyone knows of a guy who drives a car around that he can't afford, who, who, goes in, who lives in a home that they can't afford. And um, they 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 put on a flare of having true wealth, but they they don't have wealth. They have debt, and 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 I'm not judging that individual. I'm saying that everyone knows that guy that refuses to acknowledge the reality of his his economic situation, which is that he doesn't truly own his car or his house, and that he has simply bought into a scheme of debt. And in order to be able to purchase and to 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 live in that um, that kind of lifestyle, it's the same deal with the markets. The markets are purely mathematical. There there is no opinion about markets. Markets don't care about your opinions. They care about facts. And the fact of what was going on in two thousand eight was that the subprime loans was was almost like a drug and so the market was getting high and it was getting real high real high and it was loving these these loans but the thing is the subprime loans they the subprime loans basically is a name that they give a classification of loans that were loans that were given to people with very poor credit who could who who couldn't pay back the loans and they knowingly did this in order to sell more debt in order so banks could make more money and eventually what happens when the immovable object meets the unstoppable force well that's what we found out you know it went up 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 boom collapsed um the financial region or the financial sectors of the markets r truly suffered they lost a lot of values lots of companies closed um, a lot of bets that were being made on the markets that a lot of people didn't know about um, because they didn't study what their 401ks were doing they lost a lot of money so that's the long and short of it that's your history lesson you can go and study it out for yourself. Um, 
There's a lot of nice charts out there that explain what happened. There's a lot of really good YouTube videos out there that explain what happened. But the problem is, and here's the, the situation, the situation is that could it reoccur? And my answer is absolutely it can. They didn't really fix the problem. They kicked the can down the road. We're looking, we're actually at a higher, if we go right now to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is an average of all the stocks and the values that are added to the stock market on a day per day basis, we're actually looking at a high right now. Um, we're actually looking at a massive bubble that's inflating. Here was the first bubble from 1995 all the way to 2002. There was a drop in 2002. They called this the uh, dot com bubble. This is when they were evaluating, they were, they were giving websites tons of value um, just because they could drive traffic to the website, but the websites really didn't merit that value. They didn't have any true value. It wasn't the real value the market was putting on them. It was kind of a scheme that was happening. So that was the first bubble. The second bubble is the 2008 bubble. Look what happened. Look at this sheer drop. This And, and pay very close attention to this drop here. From 2007, boom! We went from 14,000 points all the way down to about 6,000 points. Um, so market basically halved um, it probably would have gone completely down to the to the bottom, and it probably should have, um, but the market intervened. Then we had um, we had a quasi bubble in 2011. From 2009 to 2011, we had a bubble and a bubble pop a little bit in 2011, but they kept propping up the market. The Fed kept propping up the market with with false money, and here we have this speculation right here. This is when President Trump got elected. Um, this is a, a speculative high that no tr you know, value is being added to the market, but it's not the true value of the services or the products that are being given. The, 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 what's, the value that's being added to the stock market, a lot of it is in tech industries. So Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, they're sna they, they evaluated Snapchat, which has been excessively losing money um, at billions of dollars and uh you know it's 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 a it's 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 nonsense is what i'm saying it's nonsense and and here we see in 2008 it halved this is a larger bubble this is a lot bigger a way larger bubble than what's going on here and so here's now we go back to the strategy the strategy that we're discussing here um do you remember the faz ticker that I just showed you on the Robinhood app, and I showed you how to purchase one share of it. Right now, the fast ticker, it's ticking away at $19.46, right? Let's look at where it was in 2008. At 2008, it was at $9,296 a share, okay? So what am I saying here? Well, I'm saying that this bubble that we're in This bubble that we're in here, the same bubble, and you can see it. You don't need to be an expert. Um, you just need to have a certain amount of critical analysis to be able to understand what's going on here. This is a bubble. There, there is no true value. This is an inflated bubble. They've propped up with bad money, bad loans, and there was a market decline, and it's happening again.